welcome, this is Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to learn how to more easily consume data coming from observables using the standard async pipe. We are going to see a way of building our programs that is closer to the functional reactive programming paradigm. So stay tuned! We can see here that we are using a state variable in our component, lessons, this contains an array of lessons. So this is ok, but imagine that we would prefer to build our program around the notion of streams and observables only. So in this case we are going to define our program in a way that our views, our components, simply react to the arrival of new data and display it on the screen, but they themselves don't contain directly any state. So the application does have state, it always has state. The state is for example at the DOM level. The state can be somewhere in your application. It doesn't have to be in your application code. State variables are actually a source of bugs, so mutability is a well-known source of bugs in applications in general. So the more state variables we can avoid, the better, as long as it's still practical to write our program and does not present a lot of cognitive overhead for the developer. We can do that by, instead of using state variables, using observable member variables. Instead of using a lessons array variable, we are going to use a lessons observable. So it's just an observable that each value is an array of lessons. Let's now try to pass it to our template to see what happens. If we try this out as it is, we will see that we will get an error saying, for example, cannot find a sporting object, ng4 only supports binding of iterables. So this basically means that we have passed to the lessons list something else other than what it was expecting and we got an error. If we want to pass in data coming from observables into components that are not expecting an observable, we can use the standard async pipe. Let's try that. We just do pipe async and what this async pipe will do, this is an impure pipe that will subscribe to the observable and it will retrieve its last known value and it will pass it to the component. So this also works for promises. As we can see, now the lessons list receives correctly the lessons just like we wanted. Now, if we want to pass the observable to another place in the template, we need to apply pipe async again. Let's give an example, let's print out the total number of lessons to the screen. If we try this out without further modifications, we can see that we get an error that says cannot read property length of null. This is because the pipe has subscribed to the observable, but while the observable does not return its first value, the value will be null, so if we try to call null.length, we will get this error. We should guard against this error condition in our template by using simply the Elvis operator like we saw before. So using observable member variables is just a possibility that we have to build our program. It's not in any way mandatory. It's just an interesting possibility. One thing to avoid, in, at least in retrieval operations, is to call the service layer directly from the template. So for example, instead of using lessons pipe async, we would do lesson service dot load lessons pipe async. This is really something to avoid because the template is continuously being regenerated and its expressions are continuously being reevaluated. So you would have a series of network calls being made to the backend and you might not understand immediately why. Speaking of which, we are going to learn in the next lesson what is maybe the biggest pitfall that you can find while using Angular 2 HTTP. So it's coming right up.